Our game's looking a little bland. How do we add sound effects and audio to it that seamlessly loops through different scenes? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So first we want to start off with actually getting some music into our game. So under our assets, we can make a new folder. So right click create folder, and then we will create a folder called music, enter. And then you can download music from any website that you want. So right now I'm on Incompetech, they have royalty free music, which basically means you don't have to pay for the music. You go to the one you want. In this case, I'm going to use Pixel Land. You download and then choose free license and you have to give them attribution. If you don't want to give them attribution, then you have to actually pay for the music. So I'm going to be using Pixel Land for the music and for the sound effect, I'm going to be using the sound effect. When the player dies, I'm going to play the sound effect and I'm using one made by Dan Lucas. And then he says, you can use my sounds freely. It would be great if you can credit me. So they also have the license right here. All right, let's get to it. So in your file explorer, you'll have your music. So you can just drag and drop the music into your assets folder and it will import it. And then when you click on the audio, you can see there's some extra settings in there, but we won't be using those for now. So to add music to our game, we can just right click on the hierarchy. We can create empty and then I'm going to press F2 and I'm going to rename this to music player. So we have to have a game object and then we have to add an audio source to our game object. So on the right under the inspector, we can add a component and I'm going to add in an audio source. And then you can just drag in that pixel land audio clip. And once the level starts playing, this will start playing because we have the play on awake check marked. And then to loop it, all you have to do is press this little check mark here and it will automatically loop it. You can also play with the settings here. The priority will determine how much priority it has over different audio sources. So the one with more priority will be heard a little louder than those with lower priority. And then we have our volume, the pitch, and you can just play around if you need to. So once we click play, our audio started playing, which is awesome. Currently it's a little loud on mine, so I'm just gonna put the volume down to maybe 0.6. And now the issue with this is that this is gonna be destroyed when we load in a new scene or when we collide with an enemy, we currently just reload the scene. And every time we do that, the music will restart and that is not what we want. So to counteract that, we can go into our assets under our scripts and we can make a new script. So right click create C sharp script and we will call this script music manager. Probably not the best name, but it'll do for now. So then just double click that. And now we have our music manager script. I'm going to erase these comments here. We do not need a void update function and I do not need these two using statements. So how's this going to work out? So Unity has a do not destroy on load function and basically it does not destroy the target object when loading a new scene. So we can apply this do not destroy, don't destroy on load to our script. So in our script, we're actually going to put this to awake, which runs before start because we want this to be done at the beginning before the level actually loads. So we can say don't destroy on load and then we have to pass in what we don't want to destroy. And so we're going to pass in this. And this basically references our music manager script because it's referring to this script. And that's great and all, but what happens when the level initializes again? So you'll have this script that did not destroy and then the level will initialize and create a another game object called music player with the music. So there'll be two musics running at the same time and we don't want that. So there's a way to make a music manager keep a reference to itself. And then if it detects a new reference, then it just destroys that reference and just keeps the same reference that it's always had. So to keep a reference to our music manager, we're going to want to do private static music manager and we're going to call this music manager instance. But what is static? Well, static makes an object non-instantiable, meaning we don't have to instantiate this object with the new keyword. As you may have noticed with our vector three, we have to do vector three equals new vector three, but 
With static variables, we don't have to do that. And when you declare a variable as static, that means we only have one copy of this variable at a time, and you can share this variable among all of the objects at, in this class. If you made it public, for example, then in player controller, I can easily do music manager, which is the name of the script, dot, and then music manager instance, and then I'd have a reference to the instance of that music manager, and I can call any of the scripts in that music manager. However, this is generally discouraged as it encourages disorganized code and can lead to difficultness in debugging. But in this case, we're just going to make it private and we're just going to use it to make sure the music manager is not instantiated twice. So in our awake function, we're going to say if music manager instance equals no. So if we don't have a reference, then assign a reference. So mu music manager instance equals this. Else we're going to destroy game object. So this is going to destroy the game object the script is attached to, meaning it will destroy the new object that's created once we reload the scene. And just save that. And then under our music player in our hierarchy, we can click it and then we can add a component and we can add in a music manager. And that will actually keep this game object through your different scenes. And you can also make another script if you have maybe a couple songs that you want to switch at certain times. But that's the gist of it. Now let's add a sound effect whenever our player hits a enemy. So you saw that we can add an audio source to our game objects, but what happens if we have a lot of audio and we don't want to essentially add a bunch of audio sources and then have to index each one by an array. Well, there's actually something called a resources folder. So under assets, we can right click create folder and we can have, we have to call it resources just like that. Make sure this is correct or unity will not find it. So in our resources, we can load objects and assets during game time. So this is useful if you have a lot of game objects, but you don't know exactly which ones you want to instantiate at the beginning. So you put them in the resources and then you load them in as you need. So in our music, we're actually going to drag our audio to that folder. So you can click the, the FX and then drag it to your resources folder. So I'm just going to drag it to assets because I don't see it right now. And then I'm going to drag it to resources. And then we can press F2 and we're going to rename it death sound. All right, so now let's load in this death sound. So if we go to our player controller, which is under assets, scripts, player controller, double click that, then you can see that under our on collision 2D, enter 2D, we have our load scene. So every time we hit an enemy, the scene reloads. So here's we want when we want to play the sound. And we can actually keep a reference to the sound. So let's do a private audio clip sound. Def sound, I'm gonna call it def sound actually. Sounds better. And then I'm actually do, gonna do this in start. I'm gonna say def sound equals resources dot load. And then all you have to do is provide the name of your sound. So in here you pass in a file path and it's already pointing to the resources folder. So since it's already pointing here, we just need to pass in def sound. So we just load in def sound. Currently we are getting an error. It says cannot implicitly convert type unity object to unity engine audio clip clip, meaning that currently it's not recognizing that it's an audio clip and this is an easy fix. All we have to do is cast it. So at the beginning, we can say audio clip, and this will cast the resource that we load to an audio clip so it can match the object up here. We actually did have a start function already. So I'm just going to erase that real quick and then just paste it in the start function that we already have because um, you can't have two functions with the same name. And then all we have to do is play the audio clip when our player hits the enemy. And then we actually have to have an audio source on the player. So if you go back to the Unity editor under player, 
we have to have an audio source because we're going to pass in our audio clip into this audio source. Right there, we're going to pass it in through our code and then we can play it. And let's uncheck play on awake because we don't want to play this on awake. We want to play it when we say to play it. And then here on our on collision enter 2D, before we load the scene again, we're going to actually assign our deaf sound clip to our audio source. So we just go audio source dot clip equals deaf sound. And then you can say audio source dot play. Now there is a problem with this. We're pressing, we're saying play the audio source, but we're also saying load the scene immediately after. So Unity will not be able to play the audio source because it loads the scene too quickly and you won't actually hear anything. So there is a way to actually wait until this is done. Um, also, there's better ways of doing this. You can probably put this in your uh, music manager script and then just you can actually get a reference to that music manager script and pass in the clip itself and then in the music manager it can play it for you but in this case i want to show you how to use a currantine um but i'm pretty sure i pronounced that wrong i've never been able to say it right but a currantine is basically a function that runs to completion before returning and you can actually specify when you want it to continue running so so let's see an example here. First, we have to start the curatine, which it starts the function. And then in the function itself, you can do um, some math. You can do some assignment property. So you can say at the top, Boolean equals true. And then you can say yield return new wait for seconds. And this is great if you want to wait for a certain time. So you can say wait for three seconds before doing this. So if you're jumping, you can jump and then you can call this curatine. And then at the top, you can say jumping equals true. So then if you're jumping and you don't want to jump again, you don't want the player to jump again for three seconds, you can say yield return new, wait for seconds, three seconds. And then you can say jumping equals true or false. Basically allows you to set variables when, once a certain time limit has been reached. And it doesn't also only have to be a time limit. You can set it for waiting for specific conditions. So in this case, we can set it for until our audio source has stopped playing. There's a bunch of other examples here, um, but I will show you it now. So the syntax is IE numerator, and then you have your function name. I'm just going to call it play sound. And then we have to have a yield return new. And here are the several things we can put. Wait for end of frame, wait for fixed update, wait for seconds, wait for seconds real time. But in this case, we want to say wait until. So we want to say wait until something is done. So in the wait until function, we can say wait until the audio source is done playing. So the syntax for this is parentheses and then an arrow. And then we can do our condition. So we can say audio source dot is playing equals to false. So is the audio source playing? If it is playing, then we still can't return. And if it isn't playing, so if it equals false, then we can continue. And so we can actually copy this load scene and we can paste it under our yield return. So this will actually stop this function from continuing on until this condition has been met. So until the audio source has stopped playing, it will not execute this. But once it has stopped playing, it will execute this. And so up here on our on collision 2D enter, we can actually copy this audio source clip um, and then we can just paste it down here under play sound right before the yield return. So it will start to play the audio. And then here we can just call start curatine. Once again, I'm probably saying that wrong. And you can just pass in the function itself, play sound. So we pass in the function and then this will start it will assign the clip, it will play the clip, and then it will not continue in this function until this condition has been met. Once it has been met, then we load in the new scene. So we can minimize now, and when we click play, then it will start over. It's a little iffy now. Um, in most cases, most games play an animation, and then until the animation is done, then it reloads the scene. But this is just an example for now. You can also use a shorter sound so that it doesn't take as long. 
But yeah, that's the gist of it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I hope it helped. And we're almost nearing the end of this beginner tutorial series. I have about one or two episodes left to go. And after that, I'll be posting some interesting stuff. So if you're interested, um, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.